E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World. O título deve ser alguma coisa como o nosso amiguinho aqui, a H64D, o nosso produtor sênior lá do DCS, o Matt Egner, postou um novo vídeo do Apache, pessoal, H64D. Vamos aqui no fórum do DCS, lá em mini atualizações do H64. Vamos carregar aqui, vamos carregar aqui. Naquela esquema, pessoal, não esquece de dar o joinha e assinar o canal aí, não. Sabe como é que é o YouTube aqui? Aqui tem uma descrição completa do vídeo dele. É o, é o sensor primário, que é o TADS, é o TADS, ó. Dividido em dois lados, bababá, bababá, bababá. Vocês vão ter de ler aí, pessoal. Eu vou colocar o vídeo dele aí do jeito que eu estava colocando, em, em legenda em português. Depois acessa o canal dele aqui no... Essa informação está aqui no fórum do DCS, você viu? H64D, novo vídeo aqui, o nosso produtor sênior, Matt Egner, vai colocar mais um vídeo, bora lá. Vamos dar uma bobeira aqui não, pera aí, deixa eu acessar aqui. Aqui não, aqui não. Ah, já eu fiz uma pré-carregamento aqui, só colocar em tela cheia aqui. O vídeo dele é longo, pessoal, 12 minutos, então deixa eu... Correr aqui para não ficar conversando fiado. Bora lá! Aguarda aí! Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll talk about the primary sensor of the AH64D, the Target Acquisition Designation Site, or TADS. The TADS is divided into two sides. The day side, located on the left side of the turret, contains the day television or day TV, laser rangefinder designator or LRFD, and laser spot tracker or LST. The night side, located on the right side of the turret, contains the forward looking infrared or FLIR. All controls discussed in this video are found in controls AH64D CPG. TADS video as a site can be displayed to the CPG's Helmet Display Unit or HDU and it can be used as a night vision sensor or NVS for either crew member. For today, we'll turn off the HDU by pressing I. Usually, the CPG will have control of the TADS as the site, but the pilot could select the TADS as the NVS sensor to take TADS control away from the CPG. In this video, though, we'll display the TADS as a site on the TADS Electronic Display and Control, or TDAC. TADS video can also be displayed on the MPD using the vid or video page. Outside of the failure of the Pilot Night Vision System, or PNVS, the TADS is the property of the CPG. We'll look at this in Part 2. There's a lot to break down here, so in Part 1, we'll start with the basic use of the TDAC. The TDAC consists of the TDAC display unit, or TDU, video display, and left and right hand grips. Around the periphery of the TDU are various controls and selections. To use the TADS, press the TDAC right hand grip site select switch right for TADS, or using the collective mission grip, site select switch right for TADS. Selecting up would set the helmet as the site. Along the top of the TDU are four buttons. TADS displays TADS video. FCR displays fire control radar video, which will come later in early access. PNV will display both pilot symbology and FLIR video from the PNVS when the pilot is using PNVS as a sensor for flight or just pilot symbology when the NVS is not being used as a sensor. We'll talk about the PNVS in a later video. G slash S displays a grayscale calibration pattern. Let's begin with the grayscale. To the right is the day night off mode dial that sets the default brightness for day and night operation or turns off the TDU. When in day mode, the video will be in grayscale and when in night mode, it will be in green scale. Using the brightness and contrast rockers on the right side, Adjust the brightness and contrast so that the 10 unique shades of gray and green are displayed. 
When in this mode, it should be noted that this only affects the TDU and not the HDU. Use just the brightness and contrast rockers to adjust the HDU. Once done, select TADS to display TADS video on the TDU again. The grayscale procedure should be accomplished during the run-up as part of the MTADS operational check and updated periodically throughout the flight as ambient lighting conditions change. Additionally, during the MTADS operational check, the FLIR gain and level should be adjusted using the TDU gain and level knobs for optimal image and then adjusted as needed throughout the flight. Keep in mind that a FLIR adjustment that works for targeting may not work for flying. From the symbology rocker on the right side, we can adjust the brightness of the symbology displayed over the TADS video. Currently, TADS video is set to FLIR, but we can select between FLIR and Day TV on the CPG left hand grip by setting the sensor select switch to the middle position or TV. The DVO option was removed with the MTADS upgrade. When the azimuth elevation option is enabled from the bottom bezel on the TDU, the elevation azimuth rocker buttons can be used to null out any TADS drift. It's completed during the MTADS operational check drift null procedure during runoff if any TADS drift is detected. To the right of the azimuth elevation bezel buttons is the auto contrast mode or ACM bezel button. When selected, FLIR level and gain controls are disabled and the system will automatically adjust for changing temperatures in attempt to provide the best image possible. Above the elevation rocker is the range focus rocker which adjusts the video focus for both the day TV and FLIR which is planned for later. To the right is the freeze bezel button that will freeze the TDU image when enabled or boxed. To the right of the freeze bezel button is the filter bezel button which is not currently planned. Last on the TDU is the asterisk button which will return the brightness and contrast settings to their default values. The TADS video image has various fields of views based on the selected camera. The TADS field of view switch is a four-way switch located on the TDAC left hand grip. The Day TV provides the CPG with three levels of zoom, wide, narrow, and zoom. And the FLIR provides four levels of zoom, wide, medium, narrow, and zoom. Note that the Day TV provides more powerful magnification and may be more useful during daylight operations when attempting to identify and engaging a target. The TADS is slewed using the TDAC right hand grip manual tracker, also known as the Thumb Force Controller. These controls can be assigned as a key press in controls H64D CPG by mapping TDAC manual tracker switch down, left, right, and up. It can also be set as the axis commands in controls, AH64D CPG, axis commands by mapping right hand grip manual tracker controller X and Y axes. At this point, through the TDU, you should be able to select the desired sensor, day TV or FLIR, the field of view, manually slew the TADS line of sight, and adjust the video picture. Let's move on now to discuss common TADS video overlay symbology. Much of this will be familiar from the IHADS lesson. Along the top is our heading tape with our current magnetic heading centered on the lubber line. The other crew members line of sight and TADS sensor azimuth indication are also located along the heading tape. In the top left corner, the selected TADS sensor is displayed. In this case, FLIR. In the center, we have the TADS crosshairs surrounded by the field of view brackets. 
The field of view brackets represent the area that would be visible within the tabs if the next field of view settings were selected. Most new CPGs have the habit of ignoring anything outside the field of view gates. Don't let this happen to you. The field of regard box is centered in the bottom of the image with the selected tab sensor field of view displayed within. To the top left corner of the field of regard box is the aircraft airspeed. And to the top right corner is the aircraft altitude in feet, AGL. To the left of the field regard box is the site select status. In this case, TADS is the selected site. Between this and the box will be the range and range source. To the right of the box is the acquisition select status. In this case, the pilot helmet site or PHS. Above the box are the weapon inhibit cues, but we'll discuss these later when we get to the weapons. In addition to manually slewing the TADS, you can also slave to a designated location like a point on the TSD. For example, with the TSD on the right MPD, select cord from T5 and waypoints and hazards from T1. Select the bezel button to the left of waypoint 2 to set it as our acquisition source. Note that we now see W02 as our acquisition source on both the TDU and the TSD. Slave the TADS to the point by selecting the Slave button on the TDAC right hand grip. This will slave the TADS to the selected point and inhibit manual tracking until the Slave button is pressed a second time. Note that you can do this for any acquisition source as selected from R6 on the TSD or weapon page. For example, you could set the acquisition source to the pilot helmet site or PHS and slave the TADS to where the pilot is looking. Or you could set the acquisition source to your own helmet or GHS and have the TADS line of sight slaved to where you are looking. In addition to slaving the TADS to an acquisition source, you can also store a point through the TADS that you can then use as an acquisition source by selecting it on the cord page as previously demonstrated. To do so, slew the TADS to where you wish to store a point and then activate the Laser Rangefinder Designator or LRFD. Because the laser is considered a weapon, you will first need to toggle the Master Armament button from safe to arm. To laze, press the second detent on the LRFD trigger on the right hand grip by selecting AH64D CPG, right hand grip, and TDAC LRFD trigger second detent. By arranging the location with the laser, we can generate accurate coordinate and elevation data relative to our own aircraft position. A general rule for laser use is that if both the aircraft and the target are stationary, use the first detent to range the target. If either the target or aircraft are moving, use the second detent for continuous laser ranging. To store the point, press the store button on the left hand grip at AH64D CPG, left hand grip, and TDAC store slash update switch. If you then go to the TSD coordinate page and select court list, you can then see the point that you just created. That covers the very basics for today. In part two of the TADS, we'll discuss some of the more advanced functions, viewing the TADS through the video page, and using the TADS as a night vision sensor. Thank you for watching.